Hello internet welcome to twilight zone where today you have come to learn about your circulatory and respiratory system for the sake of your exams for the sake of your own knowledge and to circulate some information into your body <laughs> see what i did there this video is all about describing how amazing your body is and what are the systems involved in keeping your body alive and productive dear audience in this video i'll mainly focus on your circulatory and respiratory system because my brother suljuk zushan has already made a video about uh, your skeletal system which explains the skeleton in detail here is the video and it is also linked in the cards of this video i have also provided a link in the description of this video i have also made a video about neurology titled how to become a neurologist it is also here and you can reach it via the cards and the description of this video i have also made a video about food and digestion titled all you need to know about nutrition and digestion it is uh, also linked uh, to the cards of this video and i have also provided a link in the description of this video so in this video we are going to learn about your circulatory and respiratory system that how they are interlinked how they work in harmony to transport oxygen to your cells nutrition and uh, nutrients to your muscles how they work in harmony to keep you alive ultimately in this video you are going to learn a lot so buckle up and let's get started well according to the dictionary The circulatory system also called the cardiovascular system or the vascular system is an organ system that permits blood to circulate and transport nutrients such as uh, amino acids and electrolytes oxygen carbon dioxide hormones and blood cells um, and from the cells in the body to provide nourishment and help fighting diseases uh, stabilize temperature and pH and maintain uh, homeostasis Nevertheless we don't need the dictionary Well, let me explain to you the circulatory system and the and uh, its main organ, the heart, and the blood vessel that it encompasses. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Arteries get smaller as they go away from the heart. The smaller arteries that connect to the capillaries are called arterioles. Blood vessels that take blood. towards the heart are called veins veins get bigger as they go towards the heart the smallest veins are called venules capillaries go between arteries and veins capillaries are quite thin hence the name which comes from is the latin name capillus meaning hair so the blood flows like this from the pulmonary vein which is carrying the oxygenated blood delivered from uh, from the heart to the uh, from the lungs to the heart basically the uh, pulmonary vein carries the oxygenated blood to the heart's uh, left atrium and it uh, touches the maternal or the bicuspid valve which when opened uh lets through the blood and uh, the blood goes into the uh, left um, ventricle chamber then the blood touches the aortic valve which leads the oxygenated blood to the aorta aorta has three branches which supply the blood to your interior organs your posterior organs uh, and your posterior organs which um, basically involves your every organ from the brain to your kidneys then uh, the aorta uh, aorta is a large artery basically which further redivides and subdivides uh, in and supplies oxygenated blood to all parts of your body then the blood goes into your liver and uh, into your uh, pancreas and um, into your spleen and 
basically all other organs which um, through capillaries absorb oxygen and um, and um, the hair capillaries supply oxygen to your um, to your organs Cap- uh, arteries divide and redivide to form capillaries whereas capillaries unite and reunite to form veins this occurs in every organ now the deoxygenated blood is then carried uh by superior uh, vena cava from the brain and inferior vena cava from your posterior or hind limbs it reaches your uh, right atrium it uh, the uh, deoxygenated blood touches your uh, bicuspid valve which uh, when open uh, delivers the blood to your uh, to your right ventricle then the blood uh, touches your pulmonary valve which uh, opens the circuit of uh, pulmonary circulation then the uh, deoxygenated blood is finally delivered to the lungs which uh, oxygenates your uh, oxygenates your deoxygenated blood and turns your carboxyhemoglobin into oxyhemoglobin which then is supplied to the left um, left atrium of the heart and the cycle continues on forever isn't it so interesting this is called circulation there are two different circulations in the circulatory system the systematic circulation is how the blood goes to the most of the body the pulmonary circulation is how the blood goes through the lungs pulmonary means about the lungs this is how it works in mammals including humans circulatory systems of other uh, vertebrates differ somewhat invertebrates are very different blood that comes from the left side of the heart is full of oxygen and nutrients nutrients are the substances that your body needs to live like protein fat carbohydrates vitamins and minerals i have explained them in all you need to know about nutrition and digestion the blood brings the oxygen and nutrients to your body this blood receives uh, from your villi in your small intestine the blood in uh, systematic arteries is full of oxygen and nutrients is systematic arterial blood it is sometimes just called arterial blood and this blood is being pumped by the systolic pressure the biggest systematic artery in the body is aorta this large blood vessels come out of the heart smaller arteries branch off from the aorta these arteries have smaller arteries that branch off of them the smallest arteries turned into arterioles the smallest blood vessels are capillaries systematic arterioles turn into capillaries the blood from the arterioles goes into the capillaries their oxygen and nutrients go out of the blood into the tissue and around the capillaries the blood also picks up carbon dioxide and waste from the tissue the network of capillaries that brings blood to an area is called a capillary bed the other end of uh, the capillary turns into a venule venules are the smallest veins veins take back uh, blood back to the heart as veins go back to the heart they get bigger the biggest systematic veins in the body are the vena cava there are two main vena cava this inferior vena cava taking blood from the lower part of your body to the right side of the heart in medicine inferior means low and the superior in uh, superior vena cava which uh, takes the blood from the upper part of your body to the heart in medicine superior means above this same movement of blood goes through the lungs in the pulmonary circulation the blood that the vena cava uh, vein takes to the heart is full of carbon dioxide it has much less oxygen than the systematic arterial blood the right side of the heart pushes the uh, venous blood uh, into the pulmonary artery the pulmonary artery takes the blood into the lungs 
the in the lungs the blood goes through the pulmonary capillary bed the capillaries that are in the lungs veins receive diastolic pressure and uh, here uh, it where it gets most of its oxygen in the lungs it also drops off some of the carbon dioxide this is opposite to what happens in the capillary beds in the rest of your body in this systematic circulation blood drops of oxygen and picks up carbon dioxide after the pulmonary bed the blood goes into the pulmonary veins this pulmonary venous blood is now full of oxygen the pulmonary veins take blood to the left side of the heart then the blood goes uh, to the systematic circulation again now you have understood how the blood flows through the body let me make you familiar with some words and tissues now as you already know the heart is a cardiac muscle it is also an involuntary muscle which means it works on its own not under the control of a human will and it is a pumping organ it is present along the left side of your chest your heart size is equal to the size of your clenched fist it is very delicate organ thus is protected by the rib cage it has four chambers left atrium left ventricle right atrium and right ventricle now when you check blood pressure there are two numbers on the blood pressure machine the upper one is the systolic pressure also known as the arterial pressure which is sustained by the arteries thus they have to be thick walled and elastic the lower one is your diastolic pressure also known as the vein pressure now the arterial pressure goes from the heart to the body whereas the diastolic pressure comes back from the body to the heart by now Uh, by the time the blood reaches your brain it has decreased its its pressure and this is why veins have thin walls compared to arteries they are non elastic and veins have valves which let the blood flow flow only in one direction which is towards the heart now let me make one thing clear which is all arteries carry oxygenated blood uh, from the heart to different parts of the body which is known as pure blood however except the pulmonary artery which carries deoxygenated blood to the lungs moreover all veins carry deoxygenated blood from the body to the heart except for the pulmonary vein which carries oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart so now let me get your components of blood right so for the red blood cells they are the most common type of cell the red blood cell is made of in the uh, bone marrow and found in the blood red blood cells contain a protein called hemoglobin which carries oxygen from the lungs to all parts of the body the mature human uh, red blood cell is small round and biconcave it appears dumbbell shaped in profile the cell is flexible and assumes a bell shape as it passes through extremely small blood vessels now for the white blood cells they are a type of blood cell that is made in the bone marrow and found in the blood and lymph tissue the white blood cells are a part of humans immune system to help to fight bodily infections and other diseases a cellular component of blood that lacks hemoglobin has a nucleus is capable of motility and defends the body against infection and disease by uh, ingesting foreign materials and cellular debris by destroying infectious agents and cancer cells or by producing antibodies this is a a nucleated cells white blood cells are also called leukocytes they are larger than rbcs and uh, they f- uh, help in fighting infection and disease now for the blood plasma it serves as a transport medium for delivering nutrients to the cells of various organs of the human body and for transporting waste products delivered from cellular metabolism to kidneys liver and lungs for excretion the straw colored fluid is 90 to 92% water but it uh, contains crucial so- 
solutes for sustaining health and life. Important constituents include electrolytes such as sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate, magnesium and calcium. Now for the platelets. Platelets also called thombocytes from Greek are a component of blood whose function along with uh, coagulation factors is to react to the bleeding from the blood vessel injury by clumping up thereby uh, intacting a blood clot. Uh, platelets have no cell nucleus. They are fragments of cytoplasm that are divided from the megakaryocytes of the bone marrow or lung which then enter the circulation. Here are some interesting facts about the fluid we call blood. I am sure you will be surprised. Nearly 7% of the body weight of a human is made up of blood. Blood consists of a yellow liquid which is known as blood plasma. Blood plasma is primarily made from water. 90% of blood plasma is made uh, of water. Blood plasma also consists of hormones, glucose, proteins, gases, electrolytes and nutrients. Blood plasma can be separated using centrifuge, a device which spins the blood at very high speeds. The cells then get collected at the bottom of the tube, separating blood plasma from the cell. An adult body has 100,000 kilometers or 60,000 miles of blood vessels running throughout the body. An average volume of blood present in ad adult male is 5.6 liters, while an adult female body consists of 4.5 liters of blood on average. Whereas a newborn baby will only have one cup of blood in its body. Blood plasma makes up around 55% of the total volume of blood present in the human body. Platelets, plasma and red blood cells are constantly produced by the bone marrow which then float in the blood plasma. Humans have a have artificial heart but there is absolutely no substitute for human blood. There is no such thing called artificial blood. Our body has about 0.2. Uh, milligram of gold most of this gold is actually in our blood the only place where blood cannot be found in the human body is the cornea a part of the eye because cornea is capable of directly extracting oxygen from the air more than 400 gallons of blood are filtered by our kidneys every single day nearly one fourth of the total cell in the human body are red blood cells. Therefore, the total number of red blood cells in an adult human at, a, at any given point in the time is around 20 to 30 trillion. The total number of white blood cells in an adult body is between 4000 and 11000. Please remember that these numbers are just best at estimates based on the size and volumes of cells in comparison to the total mass of the adult human body. Our heart pumps 1.5 million barrels of blood during our entire lifetime. This is enough to completely fill 200 tanks, cars of train. The exercise increases the rate at which energy is needed from food, increasing both your food and oxygen by the body. This is why when we exercise both our pulse rate and heart rate, even breathing rate increase. Pulse rate is an indication of your heart as your arteries expand each time the ventricles pump blood out of your heart. Now I'll explain the respiratory system. The respiratory system is all about removing waste products 
from your blood like carbon dioxide and adding uh, products that your body needs for example oxygen now respiratory system is a network of organs and tissues that help you to breathe it includes your airways lungs and blood vessels the muscle that powers your lung lungs are also part of your respiratory system these parts work together to move oxygen throughout your body and clean out waste gases like carbon dioxide now for the function of respiratory system the respiratory system is what allows us to breathe and exchange carbon dioxide for oxygen the primary organs of respiratory systems are lungs which carry out this exchange of gases as we breathe the lungs work with the circulatory system to pump oxygen rich blood to all the cells in our body pathway of air is first through your nasal cavity or oral cavity then through your larynx and pharynx after that the air enters your trachea now to enter your trachea the epiglottis needs to be vertical then it enters your primary bronchi right and left afterwards it your secondary bronchi then tertiary bronchi then it goes to the bronchioles and finally it goes into your alveoli which is the site of gas exchange therefore you ask what is the process of breathing the process of breathing also called the process of respiration is divided into two distinct phases inspiration or inhalation and expiration or uh, exhalation during expiration the diaphragm relaxes and the volume of the uh, thoracic cavity decreases while the pressure within it increases as a result the lungs contract and the air is forced out the diaphragm does not not do the work of breathing the muscles between the ribs or intercostal muscles the muscles in neck and abdominal muscles do that your respiratory system's primary function is to breathe air absorb oxygen into your blood stream and breathe out carbon dioxide this oxygen is taken through the blood uh, to the rest of your body where it is used to produce energy so here are our four top questions of the topic under discussion firstly what is the difference between breathing and uh, respiration while breathing is merely inhalation of oxygen and exhalation of carbon dioxide respiration is the process of breaking down glucose to produce energy which is used by our cells to carry out the cellular function breathing takes place in the lungs whereas respiration takes place in the cells secondly what is the function of bronchi bronchi singularly known as bronchus are the extensions of the windpipe that uh, shuttle the air to and from the lungs think of them as highways for gas exchange with oxygen going to the lungs and carbon dioxide leaving the lungs through them they are a part of a conducting zone of the respiratory system thirdly which lung is larger and why a person's lungs are not actually of the same size the right lung is a little wider than the left lung but also shorter according to the york university the right lung is shorter because it has to make room for the liver which is right beneath it the left lung is narrower because it has to make room for the heart fourthly what is the last structure of the air passageway in your lungs the trachea is also lined with cilia which uh, sweeps fluid and foreign particles out of the airway so that they can stay out of the lungs at its bottom end the trachea divides into the left and right air tubes called bronchi which connect to the lungs the exchange of gases oxygen and uh, carbon dioxide between the alveoli the blood occurs by simple diffusion oxygen diffusing from the alveoli into the blood and carbon dioxide from the blood to the alveoli 
the diffusion requires a concentration gradient so co concentration or pressure of uh, oxygen in the alveoli must be kept at a higher level than the than in the blood the concentration or pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveoli must be kept at a lower level than the blood we do this of course by breathing continuously bringing in fresh air with lots of uh, oxygen and little carbon dioxide into the lungs and the alveoli here are the flow chart of inhalation and exhalation all designed by me here is the difference between inspiration and expiration here is the difference between inhaled air and exhaled air here is the function of every part of the respiratory system explained individually here is the difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration here is the difference between the inspired and expired air so what are the other adaptations of alveoli for gas exchange well alveoli has thin walls alveolar walls are one cell thick providing gases a short diffusion distance they have moist walls gases can dissolve and in the moisture helping them to pass across the gas exchange surface they have permeable walls which allow the gas to pass through oxygen moves from the alveoli into the blood by diffusion so you ask me how does the structure of the alveoli make gas exchange efficient due to its thin walls and the capillary network around it which basically gives a small distance for the oxygen and carbon dioxide to diffuse across making gas exchange efficient alveoli contains many elastic fibers which allows it to expand and recoil according to the volume of the air breathed in when expanding alveoli surface area is increased and thus the diffusion rate is faster now one more important question that is how many alveoli do we have we have around 6 million of them tobacco epidemic is one of the biggest public health threats the world has ever faced with each inhalation smoke brings its more than 5000 chemical substances into contact with our body tissues from the start a black resinous material begins to coat our gums and teeth damaging our tooth enamel and eventually causing decay smoke also damages the nerve endings in our nose over the time causing the loss of smell and taste inside airways and the lungs smoke increases the likelihood of infectious as well as chronic diseases as well as bronchitis and asthma and this causes this it causes by damaging the cilia tiny hair like structure whose job is to clean the airways then it fills the alveoli tiny air sacs that enable the gas exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide through the capillaries between the lungs and the blood a toxic gas called carbon monoxide crosses the membrane and binds with the hemoglobin to form carboxyhemoglobin it is then transported throughout the body that's one of the reasons that smoking can lead to oxygen deprivation and shortness of breath within about 10 seconds the blood stream carries a stimulant called nicotine to the brain triggering the release of dopamine and other neurotransmitters including endorphins evoking pleasurable sensations which makes smoking highly addictive they cause shrinking of blood vessels and damage their delicate endothelial lining restricting blood flow thickening of vessels and platelets stickiness in the blood increases the likelihood of clots forming that ultimately trigger heart attacks and heart strokes many of the chemicals inside cigarettes can trigger dangerous mutations in our dna and can form cancer arsenic and nickel may disrupt the process of dna repair thus not allowing the body to fight cancer 
One third of the deaths are caused by cancer from smoking in the US. And uh, smoking can harm eyesight, weaken bones. But for those who quit smoking, there is a huge positive upside, almost immediate and uh, long lasting physical benefits. After 20 minutes of the last cigarette, heart attack and BP normalizes. After 12 hours, carbon monoxide levels stabilize that their blood can carry more oxygen. After a day, risk of heart attack decreases. After two days, nerve ending, taste and smell recovers. Lungs become more healthier after a month. The cilia starts gaining health in about nine months. After one year, the heart rate and the risk of the heart rate plummets to half and strokes and wrists continue to reduce within five years. After 10 years, the chance of getting a fatal lung cancer decreases by 50%. DNA begins to restore and 15 years and in 15 years the likelihood of developing a coronary heart disease is that of a non-smoker. Quitting smoking is not easy but it is clear that it has many benefits. Of course, quitting smoking can lead to anxiety and depression but it has a huge upside to it. The replacements for nicotine can be um, can be perfumes that can stimulate the smoker's demand for nicotine, and uh, the anxiety and the depression can be relieved by having coaching classes and uh, doing exercise daily, drinking water, and keeping healthy. Basically, well, actually, I have made two models. Uh, on the investigation of air pressure. One of them is the lungs respiratory model. Here, this represents the rib cage, the diaphragm, the alveoli, our lungs, the bron uh, bronchus and uh, bronchioles, the larynx and the pharynx and the nasal cavity. So basically, what you do is you pull down the um, diaphragm, the balloon which is basically representing the diaphragm down and this decreases the air pressure inside so that the air flows inside from the nasal cavity into the respiratory system into your alveoli. So as you can see they expand. When you uh, push it upwards they um, they are like they lose their air basically. So um, when you uh, push the diaphragm up, the uh, air pressure inside is increased, and the air leaves the um, um, lungs. And this is the process of exhalation. Firstly, I demonstrated the process of inhalation or inspiration and now I have demonstrated the process of exhalation or expiration. So, as you can see, this clearly represents our lungs. Moreover, the second model is the barometer. This, as you can see, I have uh, placed an ice cream stick and uh, a tin can and this is its display. Now, as you can see, as the needle moves up due to in, uh, due to um, more um, warmer air touching the uh, balloon, which is on top of the tin can, the needle moves up, and the um, I, on, on top of the ice cream stick, I place the needle so it can give the accuracy. And when the uh, ice cream stick goes down due to uh, colder air, the needle also goes down. It points down. So uh, then you can see I represented the uh, two analogies with the symbols of sun and snowman. So you can clearly tell the uh, you can check the weather with the barometer that I made. Dear audience, 
thank you so much for watching this video of the twilight zone and thank you for your love and support